Hello, my name is Jared Hicks. I am a support engineer and software engineer here at Monsoon Solutions. I'm mainly in charge of uh, maintaining the software for the power monitor itself, as well as assisting with any usage questions or hardware questions for the device. Um, just like to give a quick introduction of what the power monitor itself is and what it can, uh, what it's capable of doing. And so the basic idea uh, of the power monitor is a combination power supply and current measurement device. Um, for those of you familiar with us, uh, you may remember our low voltage power monitor, which came in a white case. It looked identical to this one. Um, the big difference between the old one and the new one is the voltage range. This uh, new device, uh, as indicated by the name, high voltage power monitor, it's capable of a range between 0 0.8 and 13 and a half volts with up to six amps of continuous current. Um, and we can measure that uh, and supply that via our main channel, which is gonna be these two banana connector connectors right here on the front. Um, we have three measurement channels on the device, the auxiliary, main, and USB. Um, starting with the auxiliary channel, this is mainly for usage with uh, external power supplies. So if you didn't want to use our uh, internal power supply on this device, you can use your own benchtop power supply and run it through this, uh, through this channel right here and still use this as a measurement device. Um, next to it, we have our banana connectors. As I already stated, this is our main measurement channel. Um, this has the range of 0 0.8 to 13 and a half volts of, uh, of voltage supply and has that six amp continuous uh, current supply capability. Um, over here we have a USB type A port. Um, this is a measurement channel as well. You can measure uh, devices which are much more convenient to use via the USB port. Um, for example, this Raspberry Pi is pretty simple to power off of the USB cable versus uh, cutting cable open and supplying it uh, through our main channel, for example. And so for that, I can use this USB channel instead. Um, this USB port also has a secondary uh, capability of being a pass-through. So if you need a data connection to a device that you're currently measuring on the main channel, you can use this USB to send commands or to maintain a data connection with that device. Um, next to that, we have a USB type B port. Um, and this is used to supply additional uh, voltage for the USB port. So if you're making measurements out of this front USB channel, you need to have this secondary cable plugged in. Um, on the back, we've just got our power connector and our computer USB hookup. Um, the device itself is FCC and CE compliant, as well as being UL certified. Um, so it is a UL listed device, and you can look that up if you would like to. And so I'd just like to give a quick demo of a uh, cell phone being powered by this. Um, I have a Nexus 5P, which we have modified in-house. Um, this no longer has a battery in it. Instead, we are going to connect it directly to the power monitor. And then I also have a USB cable, which I'll be hooking up. Um, oftentimes with cell phones, when you take the battery out, since it can no longer read the cells in the battery to see if they're good um, or confirm if there's even a battery present, it'll require a uh, just a data connection via the USB port to get going. So we'll go ahead and hook this up here. And we'll fire up our software. And we have our own in-house software, which we use uh, to power or to control the power monitor, which is called Power Tool. Um, it's available on our website, uh, msoon.com. And you can download it and play around with it if you'd like to. We have some example uh, test files, which are included in the software. Um, and so here we can kind of see the main screen. Uh, we have many options here. It's mainly dominated by this graph, which is gonna display our test results. Um, and since we're using the main channel to power this, we'll be displaying the main channel on here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and set our voltage to four and we'll enable that. And there's an LED indicator on the front of this. We'll kind of show you here. So as we can see, the power monitor is turned on and we're being indicated that we're getting voltage through the main channel. And we'll just go ahead and hit run here and our graph starts to populate. And so the orange line at the bottom here is gonna be our current measurement, and the purple line is going to be our voltage supply. And since the phone is currently not turned on, it's not 
you know, drawing any current. So we'll go ahead and power this up here. And we can immediately see the current starting to spike as this is starting up. And so this is pretty useful if you're trying to nail down um, exactly how much current you're drawing on certain operations of your device. Obviously this is just a startup procedure, but as you can see, we are into the phone itself. And again, this is powered just through uh, the main channel of the power supply. We can undo this USB once it's fired up and we don't need to have that on there anymore. We can just run this straight off of here. We can fire up some apps and kind of see just a general idea of what it's doing. Um, and then as we can see, it goes back to the desktop and for the most part, the current draw falls off. Um, and we'll go ahead and we'll stop this test. And with this data, we can kind of do whatever we would like to. Um, if you'd like to just see certain slices of the area and see kind of what the average current draw of that particular area was, we can kind of highlight some spots here and we can see that this was a particularly large spike, um, which can be useful if you're just trying to get a general idea. Um, but if you need more specific data, we can also export this and we can export all samples and we'll just kind of show you what that looks like. Um, the device itself uh, takes 5,000 samples per second and uh, we can export all of those to a CSV. And so we'll just go ahead and open up our CSV file here. All right, and so as you can see, we've got a measurement coming through every 200 microseconds. And I didn't fire this up for a little while, so we'll just kind of go down here. All right, here we're starting to get some measurements. And so as you can see, once we fired it up, we started to see some actual current draw. And so it's going to export whatever you have selected on the graph. So in this case, we've got the time in uh, seconds, the current draw in milliamps, the power draw in milliwatts, and the voltage itself. It's gonna take all three of these measurements every 200 microseconds and have the capability of exporting them out. If you have any more questions on the device itself, uh, feel free to check out our website, uh, msoon.com. You can also Google Monsoon Power Monitor and we should pop up. Uh, in addition, we'll have some links below. So feel free to check it out. The software itself is free to download. You can play around with it if you'd like to. Uh, if you are not running on Windows 8 or Windows 10, we also have a Python library available, uh, which can run on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. So if you need something that's a bit more portable, we got you covered. Uh, once again, this is the uh, Monsoon High Voltage Power Monitor. Thanks for watching.